everybody. Today at Mrs. Impostato's Read Aloud, there is a guest reader. And if you have ever been to our Tuesday third grade, you're going to know who she is. She's a very dear friend of mine, and her name is Kiki Bean. And I'm going to give it over to her right now. The name of the book is The Donkey That No One Could Ride, written by Anthony Stefano and illustrated by Richard Cowdery. Jesus went on toward Jerusalem. <clears throat> he sent two disciples ahead and said, Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. All of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And this is from Luke chapter 19, verse 28 to 38. There once was a donkey, young, weak, and small, so weak he could carry nothing at all. Even when children sat on his hide, he'd wobble and tumble and fall on his side. No matter how much he tried or he cried, this was a donkey that no one could ride. He couldn't haul stones. He couldn't dig ditches or carry rich men with their big bags of riches. He couldn't pull carts with huge bales of hay. Just lifting a feather would make his legs sway. No, this donkey was useless. No good at all. Too puny. Too shaky. Too scrawny. Too small. Now, <clears throat> the donkey's owner was quite mean and tough. He said to the donkey, I've had quite enough. He pointed his fingers and said with a huff, You can't lift a person no matter how light. So take your things and get out of my sight. Go away from here, donkey. Go away and just hide. What use is a donkey that no one can ride? So the donkey was led down to the far edge of town, pulled by his neck with his head hanging down. He was tied to a post on a small dusty road and left all alone while his tears overflowed left all alone and wondering why he was born to be weak and born to be shy and born to be frightened and born to cry. Just then, two men appeared alongside the post in the village where the donkey was tied. They came without warning on that fateful day they came and untied him and took him away. The donkey was frightened. He said to the men, where are we going? And then he said again, where are we going? And what about me? Please, leave me alone. Just, just let me be. Keep quiet, the men said. We mean you no harm. Just follow us quickly. No cause for alarm. They walked on for miles and miles until they got to a town at the foot of a hill. At the foot of the hill stood a man, tall and thin, wearing a cloak and a beard on his chin. He had eyes that seemed sad and longish dark hair and a voice soft and gentle that floated on air. He said to the donkey, it's time that you knew about the great thing that you're destined to do. 
You will carry me into the city, we too. Into the city, I'll ride atop you. What's that you say, cried the donkey with dread? There's simply no way. You've been misled. I'm just a small weakling. You must go ahead and look for another to take you instead. You see, I'm just hopeless. Ever since I was born, I've been subject to insults and teasing and scorn. My back's somewhat crooked. My legs aren't strong. I'm just a big failure who does everything wrong. Won't you believe me, the sad donkey cried. Just leave me alone and cast me aside. I'm just a poor donkey that no one can ride. The man looked at him with a face that was wise, with a warm, tender smile and love in his eyes. And then in a calm and mysterious way, he opened his mouth and started to say, My help is enough. It's all that you need. It's all that you require in your life to succeed. The weaker you are, the more strength I give. I'll be there to help you as long as you live. I know you feel tired and frightened and broken, but do you believe the words I've spoken? Do you believe? I'll ask you again. Do you have faith I can heal you, my friend? For some reason, the donkey was sure that he knew. The words the man spoke were honest and true. They were said with such kindness and caring and love, it seemed that they came from heaven above. The donkey burst out, I believe it's true. I believe, he repeated. I believe, yes, I do. The man stretched his hand out and closed both his eyes. And then, to the little donkey's surprise, he felt a sensation he couldn't control from the top of his head right down to his soul. All of a sudden, he realized that now his body was stretching and changing somehow. Most amazing of all, at that very hour, the donkey began to sense he had power. He didn't feel strong. He didn't feel small or weak any longer. Instead, he felt stronger and stronger and stronger. He could feel in his body the energy flowing. He could see with his eyes that his muscles were growing. His back felt like iron. His legs felt like steel. His chest felt so strong, it just couldn't be real. It's a miracle, a miracle, the donkey cried out, a miracle beyond any doubt. In order to show all the thanks that he felt, the donkey bowed his head down and knelt in front of the man who had made him so strong, with a beard on his chin and hair that was long. The man looked upon him with sorrowful eyes then sat on his back and told him to rise. We're bound for that city that's west of the hill. I have a great mission I need to fulfill. The donkey got up. His tears had all dried. With bulging muscles, he started to ride. No longer a donkey that no one could ride. Now he had courage and power and pride. He started to stride. He started to run. He couldn't believe he was having so much fun. With a clippity-clop and a clippity-clop, he kept right on going with no need to stop. But as they drew near the gate of the town, the donkey could hear a very strange sound. The curious noise made him perk up his ears. What could it be? It sounded like cheers. 
Soon crowds of people came into sight, shouting and waving their arms with delight. They were cheering the man and giving him praise, yelling hosannas and crying hoorays. It was amazing to see the love they expressed. They called him a prophet and said he was blessed. In front of the donkey, they threw with their arms flowers and garments and branches and palms. They laid all these down and started to sing, calling the man Savior and King. The donkey was happy. Gone were his tears. Never had people sung in his ears. Never was there a moment so sweet as carrying a king with palms at his feet. And all his life after, the donkey rejoiced that the king had made such a wonderful choice. To help with the greatest mission of all, the king used a donkey, young, weak, and small. So every year at Easter time, renew your hopes again. Remember how a little faith can give you strength and then gather all your friends around and tell the tale of when a tiny donkey carried God into Jerusalem. So the challenge for this week in these times that so many things are hard for us is to think of something or keep in mind a time when something hard may come up, something you think you can't do. Think to yourself, I'd never be able to do that, maybe in your schoolwork. And remember, with Jesus at your side, you will be able to do it.